Hello, I'm Adrian Kennard. I'm going to try and discuss some difficult topics here. I don't profess to be an expert in foreign policy or politics or even religion, so I hope I've not got this too wrong. I do usually try to avoid religion if I can, simply because of the impossibility of a reasoned and rational debate on the matter in most cases. We are seeing calls for banning of extremism, the wiping out of such things from social media. Now, I think I know where they're going with this. My understanding is that there are groups of people that not only have their own political agenda, but are actually quite good at indoctrinating people. So much so that they manage to create suicide bombers and even suicide mad stabbing rampage nutters, as we've seen even yesterday. And it's very, very sad what's happened. I, I sympathise with those that have lost friends and relatives. Somehow people who may otherwise be normal and rational have managed to be convinced to take radical and life-threatening steps in the name of some belief they now hold. And it's quite scary. It shows the power of such things and is part of the problem with religion generally, I think. I would not dream on picking on one religion here. It seems to me that all religions have the unenviable challenge of convincing people to believe something with no evidence. This is very contrary to our normal rational thought processes. I suspect some people are much more susceptible than others. Personally, I think we create this problem by bringing up children with belief in religion. We indoctrinate our children, well, not mine, but a lot of people do, into some belief. And typically the belief we learned ourselves when we were young. We force children to compartmentalize a, a set of irrational and unsubstantiated views and beliefs in a part of their mind they can keep separate from the other sane and rational parts of their mind and wrap that irrational part in immutable walls of faith. I cannot help thinking that a child raised with, without indoctrination, even one educated in the way of religion as things that exist in the world like teaching the old Norse gods and, and so on, an interesting set of beliefs people once had and some people still have for the few religions that are still alive today, that such a child would be much harder as an adult to pull into a cult and make into a suicide bomber. Now, Is that just me being optimistic or is that really the case? I don't know. However, we see people use religion as a tool. It probably does not matter which religion they choose. Most of them will have suitable wording in their holy text that can be distorted into the goals um, with, with the authority of being ancient and revered. It's often said that the best way to turn a Christian into an atheist is to get them to properly read and study the Bible. And I suspect the same is true for many religions. But being selective and however they do this brainwashing, they seem to succeed in making human weapons. So let's get back to the politics for a moment. We want this to stop. Personally, I think we need to understand the motives of the organisers. We you know, need to understand why they're doing this and what do they want. Can we work with them? And as we've done in the past with other terrorist disputes, can we work to find common ground and a resolution to conflict. I don't know. This is where I said I don't know enough about politics and foreign policy. I really don't know. What we see our cries for is to pull the extremism from the internet. Now this is hard. Extremism and exploiting religion. Um, even our own state religion, the Church of England, has many dark things in the Bible, things that will definitely count as extremism. Uh, to ban extremism is pretty much a ban on religion because religion is extreme. It is, it, it's forcing someone to believe something with no evidence. Now that's extreme. That's exactly the sort of thing we want to ban. Now that might sound sensible to many, but sadly, it's been seen not to work. Once a meme is out there, especially one as old as most religions, banning it has the opposite effect. It creates underground movements and followers. You, instead, you have to tolerate it allow it, tax it, much like alcohol. Banning it won't work. But even you, if you wanted to try and ban the most extreme bits, you have a massive problem because there lies the curse of censorship and control of free speech. Where on earth do you draw the line? And how do you stop that line creeping ever closer to any thoughts that are not sanctioned by the thought police? 
I really feel that free speech and freedom of expression, even by religious groups, is a human right we should not be compromising, especially at a time like this. We shouldn't give in to the terrorists and change what we hold so dear.